Guys, it's January. Welcome to this episode. And this month, we're targeting predator species on our properties. Deer season's wrapping up. Guys, it's time to get after the predators. This is going to be a lot of fun. All right guys, so number one, we're gonna go over raccoon sets. Raccoons are a big problem on a lot of properties. Um, if you have deer feeders or so on and so forth, it's, it, they're, they are always causing trouble. Um, they hit the nesting animals really hard. So that's, you know, if you're a bird hunter, that's also something to keep in mind. Um, their raccoons just, since fur numbers have dropped, the, the numbers of predators have skyrocketed, raccoons being one of those, and the numbers often, in, in a lot of areas, have really become unbalanced. So what we're going to go over on the first part here is we're going to put in a dog proof set, and it's something that's very effective. It's a very simple trap. I've caught a lot of number of raccoons with these traps in a very short amount of time. So you can go into your property, you can really, really do a lot of good in regards to predator management in a very small amount of time. Get in, get out, uh, and let the deer do get back to doing their things before they drop their antlers. So uh, the number one thing that we're looking for, for on raccoons most oftentimes is water. Raccoons are really, really uh, a, very much a water animal. Their habits are centered around water. Um, they'll, their den trees are usually big cottonwood trees that are long creeks, um, old buildings oftentimes as well. But uh, their tracks are, you know, their tracks are real defined. And they're, they're habitual animals. They follow habits and trails, patterns. Uh, and just, you know, something to keep in mind is, is watch these animals when you're, during deer season, you know, oh, hey, you know, there's raccoons using this trail all the time, you know. I need to remember that for when trapping season rolls around. So uh, we're gonna put in a dog proof set right here. Um, we, I've got several out, but we're gonna put in a new set because uh, we've got shifting wind patterns. So you wanna keep the wind in your favor as much as you possibly can. I know it changes. So you wanna have sets out for multiple wind directions, um, but we've got, we've had a north wind and I have have some sets out set specifically for a north wind, but I'm gonna put in a couple south wind sets because we're going to have some shifting winds, we're going to have some warming temperatures so that the wind is blowing the scent from the trap to where the animal traffic is most likely to occur, which is here on this driveway. So with that said, let's dive over and let's go ahead and set a trap. Okay, so if you guys haven't uh, watched the December Building Whitetails video, hop back and do yourself a favor and check that out real quick because I go over the tools and specifically of what to get, what you're going to need to uh, get into the trapping side of things. Um, I've got three different dog-proof baits with me and I've got three different kinds of lures. And I'll set more than one trap in one area. This is a really good area. It's a pinch point, it's a funnel. Animals use this really uh, a, a lot, a lot of different animals, your predators, your coyotes, bobcats, and raccoons. Um, so with, here we're targeting raccoons. I've got my driver, my trap, I've got my anchor. I've already attached it to my trap uh, using a swivel. Hammer, of course, I've got a kneeling pad, makes for uh, the long days a little shorter, a little more comfortable. But I've got three different dog proof, proof baits, and I'm gonna set a different trap with a different bait and a different lure. So. Um, to mix it up a little bit. If an animal comes by and one uh, aroma isn't necessarily something that he's too interested in, maybe a different one will catch his attention better. So um, to mix that up, it works really, really well. Um, usually I don't put more than three sets out in one location like this in regards to, to dog proofs. Um, you can be very effective uh, as long as you place your traps in the strategic area. So we've got raccoon tracks running up this bank right here. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and put a trap right here on the downwind side, put it right where these animals are gonna be. Don't put it where you want them to go. Put your traps where the animals are at. Okay, so I've got my wolf fang anchor here and I've got my driver. And this slides in just like so. And we're gonna drive this point down like yay, I'm gonna go ahead and start driving this. 
and I'm gonna drive down. This is our swivel, it's got a little mud packed in it. I'm gonna drive down to where this swivel is approximately two inches, uh, even three inches is fine underground. Okay, now, pull my driver out of the ground, and this is very important. You wanna take and you wanna pull up to lock that anchor underground. It went in straight down. When you pull up, they're designed in a way where it pulls up, it locks. And that's what sets the anchor. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tamp that shut, just like so. Now, to set the trap. They make different trap setters. Um, I buy them all the time, and I lose them all the time, so. Now to set this trap, this is our dog here. I'm gonna depress the spring. Sorry, it's gonna be kinda hard for you guys to see. Just like yay. Locks the trap, the dog. Um, locks under your trigger right there, it goes into the dog, proof trap. I'm gonna go ahead and push this baby in the ground, like that. I'm gonna throw some leaves around that chain just to hide it, make it a little more natural feeling. I'm gonna put a little backing behind it, just like so. Straight up's fine, a little bit of an angle tilted towards where you expect the animal to approach the trap from. Uh, now I'm gonna take this one's uh, Twisted Anise. So it's a real black licorice smell. And it's got some corn and some other goodies inside there. And I'm gonna go ahead and dump some in. Just to the level of the trap trigger, maybe just a touch above. So the idea is the animal's going to, the raccoon is gonna reach in there and pull and scoop and set that trigger off. And that's what's going to fire the trap and catch the animal. Now, I'm going to pull out a lure. There's just something about it. Now I'm gonna take this on a very, very small stick and drop that down inside there. All right guys, so that's it. Very basic, very simple. Uh, you can throw a lot of these out and do a lot of good management on your predators in a very small amount of time. So with that said, let's jump over and we're going to put in a dirt hole set. This is a very basic set, um, but there's some very key com uh, components about it that you need to follow to be more effective in regards to catching coyotes and bobcats. Uh, it'll catch skunks, coons, possums, about anything, but we're going to target specifically uh, the larger predators of the bobcats and the coyotes. Okay guys, we're on to coyotes and bobcats now. That's our main target on this specific set. Uh, the name of this is a dirt hole set. Very common, you'll hear it a lot in the trapping world. Um, it's probably one of the most basic and, and most used sets that there is. Um, there's flat sets, there's scent post sets, there's all kinds of different sets. And if you guys wanna see that, let us know. And uh, the next trapping video that we do in the future, maybe we'll touch on some, uh, different, uh, some other kinds of sets, some additional ones. This one is very basic, it's the dirt hole set. We are on a two track right now. This is a driveway uh, going from my food plot area to a bedding area uh, in regards to deer habitat. And I get a lot of pictures of coyotes and bobcats on my, cell, or on my spy point cameras. There's even a filter where you can hit uh, coyotes and it pops up the coyote pictures. And that has actually been something that's been pretty useful to me in regards to predator management. Um, we all talk about deer management, but we don't talk about predator management near enough. Uh, this is probably one of the most, I wanna say, stressful things in regards to, to wildlife. I mean, cows and bobcats, are, they're out here all the time, just like the deer are. And so that's what we're targeting right now. So we're gonna dive down, we're gonna get down there. We're gonna put a set in. I'm gonna take you guys from point A to point B all the way through to the finished set, how to accomplish a, a very useful tool in regards to predator management. All right guys, so I've got my drill with my auger bit here. Very, very useful tool. I talked about this in the last, ep uh, last Building Whitetails episode on tools you need to get into trapping. I've got a bucket full of dry dirt and a sifter. I've got uh, my sheep's wool, my gloves. I have my waxed uh, dirt right here. I keep it in a a water jug actually yeah i keep it in a water jug don't ask me why but and then i've got my bag with uh, a few small tools and primarily my baits and my lures 
and of course my trap and a kneeling pad. I've got already got my trap attached to the earth anchor. You guys saw how to um, drive that in the last up in the raccoon part, but we're going to do the exact same thing except setting this trap and bedding this trap is entirely different than the raccoon part. Um, we're going to put our dirt hole right here back into this kind of high area on the two track. So I don't want, I want the animal to come on the downwind side uh, to investigate. They almost always will. They want to get that smell in their favor, a lot like a mature deer does. You know, the, he, oftentimes a mature buck will enter a field on the downwind side. Uh, same with trails during rut and so on and so forth. But I'm, now I'm getting a deer. So we're going to go ahead and drill our hole at a 45 degree angle. And the angle, some people do it at different angles. I'm just telling you guys how I do it. I'm not telling you. If you want to learn how everybody else do it, does it, just do a YouTube search. But all right, so I'm going to go ahead and drill this out. Okay, so I'm going to drill this hole out 12 to 14 inches deep, about yay on my auger. And I might have even marked before how deep that is on the auger. So when I get this animal up here and he is... You know, he comes up to this hole and he smells the bait and the lure in there, and he's like, oh my gosh, I gotta have that in my life. So he starts digging at it. I want him to have to work and work and work to get that out of there and spend as much time here possible so that when when uh, he's stepping around, the more he steps, the more chance that he has of setting off the trap uh, and getting caught. Um, so that's right where I want it. That's a deep enough hole. Kind of feather that out right there looked like something was digging there and piling the dirt up you want this to look as natural as possible so i'm gonna go ahead and dig the trap bed out now we're going to anchor this trap and there's some very key parts to anchoring and bedding a trap that i need to show you guys to really up your success rate okay so i've got my my trapping trowel um, i'm going to come back approximately 14 to 18 inches it kind of depends on where you're at but I don't want to be any closer than 12 inches. I want that animal, the closer they come to this hole right here to investigate, the more leery they're going to be until they get convinced that, man, I need, like I said, what's in that hole? I need that in my life. So I'm going to come back about 14 inches and I'm going to go ahead and dig my trap bed. Now, when this trap is set open, I only want to cut out in the ground the exact shape of this trap. I don't want to dig extra and... I'm going to offset it just to the right, just a little bit. So I am just going to cut. Now the thing is, is I'll probably drive over this tomorrow. Come out here to check some, check traps. But setting on a driveway is very, very effective. Animals use them all the time. I mean, we use them path of least resistance. Deer do it. Animal or bob, Coyotes do it. Bobcats do it fastest track to point A to point B and I'm gonna try to lift this out of here without disturbing any of the area around it because I'm gonna I'm gonna cover this trap up when I get to covering this trap up I want to look as natural as possible so I'm gonna lift this out of here and I'm gonna set that right there okay so there's our initial trap hole. And I'm going to take and I'm going to level this out as best I can. And I'm going to get rid of this. This is sticky, gummy clay. It's not going to do me any good in regards to setting a trap. The more traps you set, the better you'll get at knowing how big of an area to cut out. And now, okay, so I got it for the most part dug and I like a sharp edge these these shovels come with a sharpened edge at least from F and T they do um, and I like to cut that edge I like a very sharp edge around there have a sharp precise fit now in this middle I'm gonna cut it I'm gonna dig out a circle for my chain which is bedded which is attached on the bottom of my trap to sit inside I don't want my trap sitting on top of this and wobbling back and forth. So I'm gonna dig this baby out. Okay, I'm gonna put my driver in. Like yay. Now, just like so, straight down in that depression that I just dug. And now you beat till you're blue in the face. 
and we're driving, I want this swivel, same with the raccoons, to be approximately two inches underground. So when I pull up and set this trap, and I'll show you in just a second, when you pull up, it locks that anchor in the ground. If you do not pull up, I have had one time before, the animal actually pull it straight up out of the ground. I don't know how it happened, but they did it. So when I'm knocking this driver right here with the hammer, I am trying to get it to come out of that earth anchor. Um, so the earth anchor stays in the ground, but the driver comes out. And sometimes they can stick. Sometimes they can stick a lot. There. Straight up like so. Now, I'm gonna take the trap. I'm gonna pull straight up like that. And that just locked, that anchor just locked down there under the ground. I'm gonna beat all that down, still keep my depression. I don't even mind tapping out my trap bed. Nice, firm trap bed. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this baby. Guys, there is no shame in setting traps with your feet starting out. Um, I have trapped for years and years. And honestly, it wasn't that long ago where I'm finally comfortable sitting with my hands. Right here, the trap pan is catching on this jaw is what's holding it open, this trap open. So I'm going to push this down, keeping my finger right underneath so it doesn't go down too far. I'm controlling the depression of it until it clicks. Just like that. All right, this baby has clicked. She's set. Now, hold this jaw over. Just trust me, your fingers will thank you later. So I'm gonna see how close I got. I need to carve out just a touch right here. Okay, see how it, where the trap fits. Now I'm gonna take this chain, I'm gonna spiral it just like an ice cream cone down to that hole. I'm going to take and I'm going to keep your hands away from this from the trap pan this is the trap pan it, outside here the, the springs it's called the levers I'm gonna take I'm gonna push that in the ground now see that is oops just a little wobble still that trap is firm in there it's secure you don't want any wobble in your trap at all a coyote comes up and he steps on this jaw right here and that trap moves just a little he's gone He's gone. He, they do not stand for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this trap out. Now that I know it fits proper. Okay guys, so I'm gonna slide the screen over the pan and under the bolts that hold the jaws on right here. I'm gonna slide right under it on either side, yet over the pan. And the screen is gonna come out underneath on this off jaw over here just like so now when I push this down this loose jaw that brings that pan or this this trap screen down flush on top and that's this the reason behind these screen covers is it keeps dirt from falling down and underneath that trap pan if there's a chunk of dirt or a rock that falls under there and they step on that trap, that rock keeps that pan from going down. This trap will not fire and you will miss that animal. So it's very important to make sure that you have screen covers. They make different kinds, um, but these are the ones that these are custom cut for these KO extremes. So I'm going to take this trap and I'm going to ice cream swirl it back down in there. All right, just like so. Flip up this off jaw. Make sure my trap pan or trap screen is still set properly, which it is. I'm going to bring this jaw back down. I'm going to push that trap firmly into the ground. We got no wobble or very little wobble. Take that wobble out. Just like that. That trap's firm. All right. Now, I've got a bucket of sifted, pre-sifted dirt over here, dry dirt. Very important you get dry dirt. Wet dirt will freeze. Now I'm gonna blend this with wax dirt. I explained in the last video, so I'm gonna shake over on top, shake my hand. I'm gonna keep
keep it just like so. So I'm using the back side of my hand to level this out as best I can because if this trap were to go off, guys, if you're scared of getting your hand trapped, sorry, it's gonna happen at some point if you trap long enough. But if you keep your hand flat like this, you will almost never actually trap your hand. Your hand pops right out. If that trap does go off, go back your way. Um, this is wax dirt. I talked about this in the last video. I'm gonna cover on either side of the levers that run the springs. I'm gonna cover right on top, keep that chunk out. And I'm going to go just like that, create a nice flat area. Okay, so that's the wax dirt. Screw that back on. Now I'm gonna take my bucket here of sifted dirt. I got down by the creek and I'm going to sift right over the top. And I'm gonna cover up that void on either side of the trap real well. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my shovel, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna find that trap pan, which is down right there. Okay, I know my trap pan is right there. I'm gonna go around the outside and I'm going to pack firmly, staying away from that trap pan. Okay, just to make sure that trap is bedded firmly. Now, this is something very unorthodox here. I'm gonna take my wax dirt bucket. This is one of the benefits I found of using this thing. I'm gonna lightly press, not firm and not hard. Don't let this thing drop. And that is firmly packing that dirt down over a distribute weight distrib excuse me, distributing the weight over a specific area. And that will take any bubbles out, any unsettled dirt, just like so. Okay. Now you need you have to blend this. Like this edge here, this dirt does not match the grass. Kyle's gonna be like, what the heck? So I'm just gonna go ahead. Using the back side of my hand, I'm going to blend this right here just like so. Okay, like yay. You want him to, when he comes up here, to think, ooh, I just ruined somebody's day, but I'm going to steal his lunch. Okay, so this is not blended in yet. I'm going to take this clump from earlier. I'm going to take a chunk from it, grass side down in your swift sifter. I'm just going to work it like that. These things work almost like a cheese grater. I'm going to grade this right over the top just enough to get this to blend in now. It's worked off. Throw it away. Get you a new piece. If you have to go somewhere to get you some grass, make sure that it blends in really well. Okay, now we're starting to blend in real well. I like that. I'm going to scatter with that dirt around, get rid of that. We're gonna get to baiting this set. Okay, I'm just gonna take some grass, leaves, just like so. I want it to lay somewhat flat. I want it to blend with this road as best as I possibly can. I'm gonna reach back here and grab a little more grass. And my sifter. And add just a little bit more to it. That trap's plenty strong enough to come up out of there and grass won't interfere with it. So, just like so. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a pretty well blended trap. Now, I'm gonna take sheep's wool. All right. I'm gonna tear off a chunk of it about, yay big, about your palm. And I'm going to set that right there on top of the hole. Take my gloves off. You don't want to bait with the gloves that you use to set your trap. I'm going to take, uh, this is Rage from Jeff Dunlap. And I'm gonna take, I've got Q-tips. You can use a stick, use whatever you want. 
I'm going to spoon some of this lure. Actually, excuse me, this is bait right on top. Guys, if you got a queasy stomach, trap it. It's not for you because this stuff is stout. It's good stuff. Okay, I'm going to push that sheep's wool down into that hole. The reason for sheep's wool holds a lot of odor, it's oily. If we get some rain, what that sheep's wool will do is the water will go on past it down to the bottom of the hole and will still have that, will, it'll keep that bait and lure up out of that water, keep it from dissipating um, and the water from breaking the scent down. So it's a very, it makes it very weatherproof. Um, now I'm gonna run over here and just grab a little stick to help go ahead and push that on down there. I'm gonna put lure on the stick, so I'll be back, just a sec. All right, I'm back. So I'm going to take this, this Alpha Predator lure, another Dunlap product. If you guys haven't noticed, I like Jeff a lot. And I'm gonna take this stick, about 12 inches long, not quite the depth of your hole, and I'm gonna ladle out a healthy portion of lure. This stuff's strong. Bait is quantity. The more you put in there, the better. Lure doesn't take a whole terrible lot, not near as much as the bait. I'm gonna take this stick, I'm gonna push that sheep's wool, and I'm just gonna kinda of rub that lure all over that sheep's wool and keep pushing that down in there. The reason behind pushing that down in there, I want that animal to have to work for that as much as they possibly can. Okay. And I'm actually going, that stick's just a touch long. I'm gonna break it off. I've got hot shot coyote urine. I'm gonna spray some of that down in the hole and around this backing up here. A lot of aroma comes with this stuff. All right, guys, so that is a finished coyote set. This is a dirt hole set. If you wanted to uh, target bobcats, you can target raccoons. You can target all kinds of species with this specific set. But um, you want to be, uh, I set this one for coyotes, and that's more determined off of the baits and the lures that I use. So use lure and bait specific products that are targeting the animal that you're after. And there's some multi-species uh, products out there that's also available so you can, you know, catch more than one type of animal at the same time. Uh, guys, this, is, this has been a fun episode for me. Um, I really appreciate everyone following along. Uh, if you guys like it, let us know. We might do some more in the future. I'd like to do an episode on running a, a snare line and how to uh, snare coons and coyotes and bobcats, so on and so forth. Um, guys, this is, this is just one step in a, a whitetail manager's plan. This really needs to be a huge focus uh, for everyone that's dedicated to the whitetail herd, the turkeys, quail, pheasants, whatever it might be. Uh, we, we hunt the game species, but they're also being hunted by all these other predators. So we really need to make sure to keep the numbers in balance and do a good job as being managers. So guys, I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Uh, control, I mean, there's a lot of... A lot of blah, 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 blah.